and we are alive. Is sore, buddy? Cheers. Cheers. We completed our ultra. Couldn't necessarily film the end of it because there was a lightning storm, everything got dark, scary, and we had to run for our lives. But bottom line is, we finished. Finished. We're, we're normal people. Okay, we don't run 14, 15, 16 miles a day. We train for Spartans because they're fun, and we do them as a leisure activity. Okay, because who wouldn't? A lot of videos about equipment, about how to prepare with your training. Um, not enough time being spent on actual in-race strategy and pace physically um, in 10 seconds or less. I think you need to march a lot of mountains, a lot. do a lot of Stairmaster, Stairmaster. like Boston, uh, and carry a lot of heavy shit around. A lot of heavy can shit. Can video? Uh, we can bleep it out later if we have cool. to. Cool. He's going to edit whatever I say. Damn. Uh, the terrain itself was the biggest obstacle by far. We did about 15,000 feet of elevation. Uh, if your legs are not ready for that, I don't care how much you run, that's not going to prep you. We went all the way up! That's not going to prep you for And you can stay up. Uh, that's not going to prep you for the uh, this ultra. But if your legs are not ready for this particular race, no no, no amount of goo is going to save you. Yeah, there's no goo. There's cutoff timelines that you got to make. And you've got to keep a certain pace to make those. So unlike regular Spartan races where it's a completion of as long as you can make it the entire 14 miles for your beast, you get a medal. To get this, you got to hit the cutoff points. And if they you don't hit the cutoff points, you're done. You're DNF. They get you off the course. All right. We, we didn't. We didn't know this going in. Um, the cutoff points are the same for everybody. So 615, 630, 645, yeah. or 7. Yeah. No matter when your start time is. So 630 gets a 30-minute advantage over the 7 o'clock. Yeah. We had a 7 o'clock start. We're in the middle of the race, and we're figuring out, oh, by the way, we got 30 minutes to make up. So that extra 30 minutes of sleep you got that morning, it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you. And you can get lost in the woods. We got lost in the woods. We'll have to edit that out. That's a whole other story. That's a whole other story. We got lost in the woods. You're going to hear a lot of stuff about gear on the internet. They're going to tell you to put like six pairs of shoes in your bucket. Um, no disrespect to those people who do, but I don't know. Buy better shoes. I, I, I don't know what to tell you. We didn't even get a chance to stop by our bins. <laughs> we had enough time to sprint to our bucket, grab a bunch of goos and cliff bars, and then sprint out so that we could make the time hack. Uh, but that's a side note. The point is, if you don't have gear that you trust for 30 miles already, get some of that. Yeah. Okay? If, if you're worried about your laces blowing out or your shoes disintegrating after 15 miles at the halfway point, you need new shoes. You should have gear that you've used on Spartan races that you already know works. I mean, am I wrong on that? That seems right. Buy good gear. Uh, you'll thank yourself. I don't know. Like... Maybe eight hours, ten hours in. Old gear is so important in those in the morning starts. Yeah. Being able to take layers on and off. You know, it starts early in the morning. You know, we had a seven o'clock start. Seven o'clock, they dip us in the water. It's 45 degrees. That cold gear, it was huge. Your body wastes so much energy trying to keep warm. You need that energy to keep pace. And then being able to take those layers off, yeah. shove them in your pack, lose your hat or whatever you're wearing, your headgear. Your hair. And if you have hair. Um... That wasn't nice. You should edit that out. <laughs> it, was, it was freezing cold. Then it was warm, really warm during the day. The pace picked up. It was the heat of the day. And, and then we, we had lightning. And then we had lightning at the so end So get of the lightning gear. Get anti-lightning gear. Yeah. Hang out near the trees. So um, your, your gear is important, um, but you don't need a ton of stuff in your bucket. Just have enough fuel. Yeah. I guess we can transition to fuel. Yeah, calories. Uh, if, if you want to put stuff in your bucket, put anything you were taking in for calories in your bucket. We, I was using Cliff Bars and Goo. I've used that before in endurance stuff, so I know it works for me. I'm used. I know how my body deals with it while I'm running. But most importantly, is have more calories in whatever form it takes. If you train on cupcakes, put some cupcakes in your bucket. Because aside from swapping out gear and all that magical stuff. You're going to want more calories for the second portion of the beast, the loop, and all that extra stuff after you're burned out from the first part. Okay. 
No cupcakes? I mean, you do you. Okay. If you're running a ultra in someplace hot, none of that stuff was meant for you. We, we, we don't know what that's like. Uh, ours was cold and rainy. So cold and wet. If you're running a hot ultra, you know, thanks for watching. At least all homework. the other stuff. But do your homework. Don't wear layers and layers of gear because that might kill you and then you're going to send me bad reviews. So, yeah, this was a cold race for us. It was. I mean, check, check the weather. Check the weather. But be prepped. A lot of people were not prepped. A lot of people dehydrated. A lot of people dehydrated. They cramped. They, they so failed. much vomiting. People, vomiting. people were not ready for this race. You need to do your homework. You need to check the weather. You need to check the terrain. You need to watch the videos people have out there. And wow, that's a lot of elevation. And be prepared in how to train and get the proper gear. Exactly. A lot of this is elementary. I want to say one thing about pace. This guy saved us um, with our pace. Um, you are you're going to be expected to handle your own pace. I suggest GPS without that tracker and with the proper um, gear, as far as a uh, watch or something. You're not going to make the cutoffs. It's very difficult to figure out how fast you got to move for the cutoffs because the people running the courses, some of them know, like down to a T, like, hey, your next cutoff's at this time and it's this far away. And some of them just shrug their shoulders and they're like, uh, the next cutoff is, I think it's the bucket carry. And you're like, where are we already did the bucket carry? And he's like, well, I guess it's not the bucket carry. So don't yeah. guarantee that they're going to know what your cutoffs are or how many miles you have to get there. We, I would say splurge and get something that can track. If you can't get something to track, then just, I don't know, do what we did, which is just keep running faster than you did before because that will get you to the next checkpoint. And we made the first cutoff. We would not have it. We hadn't kept that pace just on our own. But by the time we figured it out, we had to go up quite a few miles in a short amount of time. Of course, we get there. We're gassed because we put out so much in that, and then we had to pop and keep going. We kind of maintained that piece, that pace and hit, and hit every cutoff. And we were, yeah, we were loading like crazy. Tons of cows. So if you're gonna, if you're going to run an ultra, those cutoffs are a whole nother dynamic that you don't see on a sprint or a beast or a, a super. A lot of people DNF. A lot of people. Some of them weren't ready. A lot of them probably were ready, but did not keep pace. Yeah. We've never run an ultra before. Um, while we were running this ultra, we passed a lot of people wearing the purple shirt, which means you're running an ultra. Don't let that mess with you and think like, oh, man, I'm really crushing this we're thing because I'm we're passing a people. lot of people. Because a lot of those people just are not going to make the cutoff. We know because we passed a ton of people. Hundreds. And then we got to our cutoff with only like 15 minutes to spare, which means a lot of those people just were not making the cutoff. First cutoff, we had 15 seconds. Well, first, yeah. You can go ahead and Google it, how many people actually finish compared to how many start. There's a very high percentage of people who do not finish an ultra. So don't run past people and think, like, I'm crushing this because I'm passing people who are running the ultra. Right. It could just be a lot of people who don't know the pace, weren't prepared, and are just not going to make the cutoff time. You do you. That would be the bottom line. Right? But hustle. But hustle. Right. All I do is hustle. All I do is hustle. I might cue the song. Like, right, you should do this. You should do that. Do that. Or just edit it out. Whatever you feel like doing. I'll pick one. Or two. You want to do a summary? Is that it? In summary. In summary. Have a guy that can make, can push you. All right. Always bring a friend right that, that can kick butt. But and then have a guy who just will not stop regardless of anything that happens. And he will just charge through. This is my son helping me with my boo-boos. Oh, uh, that's love. You need to carry a lot of heavy stuff around for miles, not feet. Make sure you are doing Stairmaster. If you're in an area that doesn't have a whole lot of elevation, if you can find like a hike that has elevation, you need to hit that. Whatever you think you need to do, you need to double it. You don't need a ton of stuff in your bucket other than refueling. Make sure you buy proper gear. Make sure you quality gear. In regards to mentality, the last thing we talked about, you, you do you. You need to keep your own pace and don't worry about what everyone else is doing. There's a lot of people that spit game out there about they did it last year or they think this up. Yeah, a lot of chatter. Focus up. There's a lot. There was a lot of banter out there, and and that's fine if they're having fun. The fun is, this is fun. This is so much fun. Finishing is fun. <laughs> you don't run a ton of races a year. We have three, maybe three or four a year. This was this was a big endeavor for us. I mean, that was probably the hardest I, I thing just, I've ever done. I'd say just dumb. I'd say borderline dumb. I,
that I we, think that morning I started the first thing I, I said yeah, to you. I think you said this, this is, dumb. is dumb. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, was, it was dumb. Yeah, it was a reckless uh, decision. I've got some healing to do. Yeah, but um, I'm really proud of us for getting through it. And I think we trained well. We were prepped well in regards to um, our food, nutrition, and everything we brought. And mo most importantly, we had the mindset to this is what it takes. You just do it. You just do it. Is One it? foot in front of the other. And you can do it too. Absolutely. But I don't know who I'm talking to, so maybe you can't. You Sorry. can try. That's the reality of it. <laughs> that was very encouraging. Should I Cheers. add that? I think do what you want. <laughs> Aru! Aru. We should watch that. We should do, we, we should do the thriller thing. Oh, we could. Absolutely. Now can we get some footage of you nursing him to health? Oh my gosh. If he'll let me. He won't, he's not letting me. What? Nurse you back to health. Hi. <laughs> it's official stage, right? <laughs> That's my better half right there. If I'm talking about other things, I'm better. <laughs> <laughs>